Hi there, boys and girls. All right, so now we are on lesson 11, um, still for Native Americans and the Arctic slash subarctic. Um, this may be the first um, reading you're listening to today from me, or it might be the second, depending on which topic you did first today on your Google Classroom. But for today's um, read aloud, where you're just gonna see me posting the pictures like we would do in class, and you hear me reading along with how they, the story goes with the pictures. You are going to be describing steps and procedures by identifying sequenced events related to the Native Americans of the Arctic and subarctic regions. Okay, so you saw that word sequenced. Remember, that's when we put things in the correct order, sequencing. Um, for this story, we're only looking at one new vocabulary word. Everybody, the word is enabled. That means made possible. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop right over to our pictures. Now, yes, just like you would see me doing it on the screen at school, Miss Wix is on her computer at home, so I'm going to try my best so you can see the picture as best you can. I want to make it so it's almost like we're in the classroom. All right. Today's story, once again, is Native Americans of the Arctic and Subarctic. If it's possible to survive on a piece of land, throughout history, people have tried to do so. It is thought that the ancestors of the Inuit, the people of the Thule culture, migrated from Asia to the frozen lands of the North to Greenland, Alaska, and Canada about 1,000 years ago. The people of the Thule culture were not the first people to live in this frozen part of the world. The Inuit are the descendants of these ancient people, and in this read aloud, you will be learning about the Inuit in addition to more about the Thule. The Inuit actually called the Thule Tunit. This cold part of the world that became home to the people of the Thule culture is known as the Arctic slash subarctic. The Arctic is a harsh, frozen, yet stunningly beautiful place. Just like the other Native Americans you have heard about, the people of the Thule culture originally came from Asia. Like most people who migrated a long, long time ago, the Thule moved from place to place in pursuit of food, shelter, and land to live on. If you choose to live in a place where much of the land is frozen, an ocean or a lake will have to provide many of the things you need to survive. In particular, the people of the Thule culture relied heavily on hunting a very large whale called the bowhead whale. Every part of the whale enabled the people of the Thule culture to survive. One whale could keep a village alive throughout an entire winter. The people of the Thule culture lived in villages of about six to 30 houses. The houses were dug into the ground. Whalebone, stone, driftwood, and sod made up the frames of the houses. They built snow homes or igloos in the winter months as they moved from place to place, hunting as they went, the people of the Thule culture used dogs to pull sleds made out of driftwood and whale bones. They used the bones and teeth of the animals they hunted to hunt the same animals. They built boats out of walrus ribs and walrus hides and hunted at sea in the icy waters. They used lamps powered by seal and whale oil. It seems that during the period of a mini ice age that swept across the world, the people of the Thule culture found it even more difficult to survive. Once the colder climate came and the ice formed over the once free moving ocean, the whales that the people of the Thule culture relied on disappeared. Essential plants disappeared too. Scientists believe that just as with other native groups, when faced with great hardship, the people of the Thule culture began to migrate. It seems that they began to migrate east in search of food, shelter, and land. Now think in your head, some of the strategies that we have been talking about lately that this author has been describing, especially in this last paragraph I read. Okay, we said that this ice age came, cause, and it made people of the Thule culture have to move to a different area, okay? 
please make sure that you pay attention that that is a cause and effect relationship. Ice Age came, the people had to move because of it. Not all the people of the Thule culture left, though, and many years later, another group of people arrived either by boat or on foot across the frozen ocean. These people joined with the Thule and created a new group. We call these new people the Inuit, and they made their home in the frozen lands of North America. When the Inuit arrived, they brought with them more sophisticated hunting techniques and were more able to withstand the harsh conditions. The Inuit were a nomadic hunting and gathering people. Over time, the older Thule culture emerged with the new culture, and Inuit became the name of the dominant culture. Interestingly, historians think that it is possible that the Inuit once lived in Greenland and Iceland before moving farther south in the Arctic slash subarctic region. The Inuit may have encountered Vikings in Greenland, and the Vikings may have left Greenland for various reasons, including conflicts with the Inuit. Historians are not completely sure what happened during this early part of Inuit migration. What we do know, though, is that the Inuit culture did take hold, and these people found new and ingenious ways of surviving in such an inhospitable region. Although the Inuit did hunt whales out in the open waters, they also relied heavily on fishing, catching seals and walruses and hunting caribou and other smaller mammals. The Inuit hunted the caribou not only for meat, but also for its very warm fur. Caribou fur was used to make all kinds of clothes, from coats to leggings, hats, and gloves. Also, unlike the other regions of America that you have heard about, it was and is impossible to farm in the Arctic slash subarctic. However, during the spring and summer months, it is possible to gather berries and seaweed and collect eggs. These things the Inuit did. The Inuit invented the kayak. A kayak is a light, one-person boat that can be used for hunting or transportation. An Inuit kayak moved swiftly and silently and was powered by a double-bladed paddle. The Inuit used whale bones for the frame, covering it with stretched animal skins. They then covered the skins with whale fat. The fat made the kayak watertight. Without the ability to farm, the Inuit had to move across the snow and ice-covered land in pursuit of the animals they hunted. As this became the only way to survive, they perfected a way to travel and a way to build igloos so that they were safe and snug. Just like the people of the Thule culture, the Inuit made well-crafted sleds. Inuit sleds were made out of animal bones and seal rope. The Inuit were skilled dog trainers, and these sleds were pulled by well-trained dogs. In fact, scientists believe that when the mini ice age occurred, it would not have been possible for Inuit to have survived in the frigid Arctic without the stamina and loyalty of the sled dogs. The Inuit took the skills already developed by the people of the Thule culture and developed them even further. The Inuit trained their dogs not to not only pull heavy sleds that could weigh hundreds of pounds fully loaded, they also trained them to sniff out seal breathing holes. The Inuit mostly used male dogs that were hitched together. Inuit dogs could and would also hunt down polar bears. Their technique was to surround an unsuspecting polar bear until their master could kill it. Traditionally in the wintertime, the Inuit lived in igloos. The word igloo is the Inuit word for shelter. The Inuit igloo was shaped like a dome. The igloo had a tunnel entrance that trapped cold air so that it could not enter the main part of the home. Igloos are made from hard blocks of snow. These homes were not made to last because the Inuit moved frequently, hunting and trapping animals. In the warmer months, the Inuit lived in tents made from caribou or seal skin. The Inuit also had a unique way of greeting one another. Although we might greet one another by shaking hands, the Inuit would do so by rubbing noses. The ancient Inuit people were very talented artists. They carved beautiful animal figures out of bone, walrus ivory, and caribou antlers. They also carved religious images and icons. They made many of their weapons, tools, and utensils this way too. Many of the things they carved had religious significance. 
Like other native tribes, the Inuit believed that all living and non-living things had a spirit. They believed that when a spirit died, it simply moved on to live in another world. In addition, the Inuit believed that the spirits could be communicated with and even controlled by a shaman. Inuit shamans wore masks and specific, specially decorated fur coats when communicating with the spirits. They asked the spirits to bring good health and good hunting. They respected the animals they hunted and believed that when an animal was killed, its spirit went to live in another animal. The Inuit are thought to be the last group of native people to have arrived in North America. Because of this, and the fact that they made their home in the frozen north, it could be said that their culture encountered or came into contact with less of the overwhelming influence of the European settlers. As it is true of the other groups of Native Americans today, many of the Inuit of today are a modern people. Many of them use snowmobiles instead of sleds, and most use igloos not for their main dwellings, but only as temporary homes on hunting expeditions. Much of their ancient language and customs, however, are still a part of their everyday lives. All right, boys and girls, go right ahead into your document, and you're gonna be working on your sequencing of today's story.